I have wanted to do this video ever since I saw this house in someone's home on YouTube and TikTok. I was just like, why are people doing this when I paid it in a few years and such a waste of money? Hello beautiful people, it's a queen of random content, Marcus, and I've got a cool renovation video for you here today. Thought it would be fun to discuss some HDB renovation trends that need to go. It's like having that annoying house guest that refuses to leave. Even after you've like cleared the plates, you've cleaned the entire house and you're in your pajamas and they still have not left your house. Just a disclaimer. These are my own opinions, so everything is filtered through my perspective, so take it with a pinch of salt. I may not have understood the homeowner's point of view and why they've done certain things. My problem is if the interior designer said, okay, you gotta do this for your house, and they just blindly did it without any thought. So let's not fall into the trap of doing things for the sake of it or to follow trends. Let's focus on making a home that is practical for us and that we're gonna love in like five years and more. Now let's get into the video. First renovation trend that needs to go, dining nook. Or a bench. A dining nook is a seating area, sort of like a bench, like a booth situation in restaurants. So they utilize the corner and they have a table, they have additional chairs. I understand if you do this and it's just a few of you in your house, but this is a problem when you host people because I went to someone's house and they had a dining nook where it was just like a long bench that could sit about three people. I sat on the inside of this bench. It was so hard for me to get out because it, if I had to go to the toilet, like, I would have to annoy the other two people like halfway through their meal. Like, I can't just like duck under the table. And you kind of have to do this like awkward like scooch, scooch, scooch in. I think the corner ones, if the dining nook can just sit like two people, then it's fine because they can both leave. And even if you like need to do your work, it's gonna take a lot of effort to scooch in and you're gonna end up just sitting on the outside. Okay, first of all, this is the wall. This side that you constantly sit on is gonna be worn down more than these other sides because you don't want to scooch in all the way. And the next thing I have a problem with are benches. I understand if people use benches because there's no backs to your chairs. So it opens up a space. It makes the place look more neat and organized as well. But like, why are you straining your back? If you've just come back home from work and you're very tired or you've exercised a few days ago and your back is hurting like mine, like I cannot bend and do things for a while and it really hurts. Or if you have older relatives coming over, they're not gonna wanna sit on a bench. If your dining table just has one bench and two chairs, you effectively only have two chairs. You need something to rest your back. So that's for the dining nooks and benches. Next thing is full leather slash leather seats and couches. So my dining area, our chairs are full leather and girl, even though it's aesthetic, faux leather and leather is not meant for this humid country, okay? It's been really hot recently, like the temperatures have been like 37 degrees or something and if you're wearing shorts at home and you sweat, like the exposed bits of your thighs is gonna stick to the leather and it's just not a nice feeling. Faux leather is fine if you're in a temperate country where it's nice and cold and you're dry or like you wear long pants in the house, sweatpants and stuff. But in Singapore, I know most of us wear shorts at home and leather and sweat just do not go well together in this humid country. The next thing is leather will tend to spoil faster due to the amount of moisture in the air and it is quite difficult to upkeep leather. Like I have leather bags and leather shoes, you have to polish them so in order to like hydrate the leather and to ensure it keeps its shine. I just think that a leather sofa is like a high maintenance partner versus a like cloth or linen sofa that doesn't need a lot of cleaning to be honest. I think my sofa is like velvet and I just have to vacuum it and spray for breeze and it's good to go. On a side note, just getting furniture like delivered to your house is so difficult because a lot of like the smaller like online companies like 42, uh, Hip Van, they only do deliveries on like weekdays in the middle of the afternoon. Like you need to take, you essentially need to take leave to be home to get those deliveries. Like why are they like this? Anyway, next, this is the one that sparked this entire video idea. I don't know if you've been on TikTok or YouTube, but you might have seen a lot of houses use fluted panels. And I get it, it's aesthetic. Even when I look at your house, I'm like, that's so pretty. But I'm worried about cleaning, especially if they had it from like the ceiling to the floor, from, like the entire wall. The amount of dust that's gonna collect in those crevices why would you do that to yourself? Because when I did my home renovation, right, um, if you would like to know more about my home renovation journey and everything, I'll link those videos down below. I've done a home renovation series. I had to check my bill to see what was necessary and what isn't necessary. Woodwork is really expensive. So why would you spend so much money on the wood? 
when you could have just painted it. Also, those fluted walls, they're gonna be permanent. If you hate them in one year, what are you gonna do with them? I have seen people do like fluted wall carpentry where it's like a fluted wall but then you open it up and it's covered. I think that is a good use of the space. And if you just do a fluted wall without any carpentry behind, I'm like, why are you wasting your wall space? You can't drill anything into the wall. You can't drill shelves. You can't put up artwork because it's like uneven. Like you're just wasting wall space and HDB flats are so small. Even a condo is so small in this country because we are we don't have a lot of land. So why would you waste your wall space on something trendy like that? So to me, the fluted panels do without it. No matter how pretty it is, it is a trend. It's gonna go. And to me, I think it's already on its way out because every single home has it right now and it's like I'm bored. As I have a little coffee break, um, if you're enjoying this video so far, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Okay, now back to the video. This next renovation trend that needs to go is open shelving in the kitchen, which I'm going to lump together with like recesses in like the living room and stuff, okay? So I'm lumping these two things together because I hate them for the same premise. Number one, dust collection. I have a photo nook. I tried to keep a lot of things like in cupboards but I had a photo nook to display. I don't know about your lifestyles but like everyone at home is just like we're working and then by the time we come back we're so tired and everything. So we like rarely have time to clean dust off every single surface. We do like the minimal cleaning of just like we wipe the fans, we mop and sweep the floors. Having open shelving will collect a lot of dust and if you have a very busy lifestyle and a lot of open shelving, you have to think about wiping those down plus the things you put on them as well, time to time. The next thing is like especially in the kitchen, Depending on what cooking you do, it's going to be very oily. And I know that some people who make very light cooking, they're not making like a ayam masak or like fried chicken or like a curry. They're like, I, it's fine, I want to have open shelving because it looks aesthetic. Think again! A lot of these trends, right, I'm thinking about it in terms of like how your life would change, which I will uh, elaborate on that later. You might suddenly be into cooking. Like I know a friend, like he usually just buys stuff out, but then suddenly he's into cooking and he's like trying to do more heavy cooking. You might be doing light cooking now, so you think an open shelving is fine. But once again, you never know what happens in the future. You might want to be a master chef. The moment you have open shelving, you do not have a lot of storage space. Once again, think about space. Even in the long run, you might think, okay, my kitchen has enough storage for everything I have now. It's enough for now. But you don't know, like, two years from now, you might be into, like, having tea sets. You might be into having fancy plates or cups and all those things. You need to ensure your kitchen has more than enough space for you to grow. The home should grow with you and you should have spaces and storage areas for it to grow along with you. So in that same space, you put two shelves. You could have a cupboard with so many inbuilt things to store your things. Baffles me how many people would choose open shelving rather than having closed cupboards with a lot more storage options. Because listen, the moment it's open, you're going to have to think about aesthetics. You wouldn't want it to be messy and you're just going to end up putting like one vase and a cooking book on that shelf. So this next one is like a sub part of like open shelving. It's called a niche. I've seen it in a lot of houses where they would make the shelf look inbuilt into the wall. To do that, they would have to make a fake wall, right? And then do the cutouts. Okay, I'm just gonna take my bag here because it's at the side. Even if your shelf is just this wide, can you imagine this entire much space ceiling to the floor just being occupied by this fake wall? You have less area in your house. And uh, if you really want to do the niche because you love the aesthetic, it's fine. But I just want you to consider, once again, growing with your house. Making sure there's ample room and then you have to think about that whole wall that you've done your niche at, right? If you hate it and you want to change it, you can't because it's already inbuilt. Versus if you bought a shelf, you can dismantle it and change it. You can change it to fit your needs. This point transitions very well into my next point, which is having an excessive amount of inbuilt furniture. So I want to share a story with you about how um, a lot of things in my house suddenly changed. Okay, you know what guys? I'm sorry, but I'm, I have to turn on my fan. I didn't turn on- I turned on my fan in like my previous video. But I hated the noise. Okay, so what happened in my life is that my brother suddenly had to come back from Malaysia to stay with us. So uh, I know a lot of you have commented like, where is your mom sleeping because there's only one bedroom and I'm sleeping in the bedroom basically. So like my mom and brother essentially have to sleep in the living room. The sofa turns into a sofa bed and we have like a foldable mattress and stuff. Just things because you know, it's so expensive to buy a big house in Singapore. So we're sharing this flat. My brother is suddenly coming back and we have to think about, okay, he needs space for a study table. He needs space for a wardrobe and stuff. I'm not saying that like your sibling might want to live with you, but I'm just thinking about, you'll, you'll never know how your life might change. Even in just a year, a lot of things have changed that might need you to reconfigure your space. 
And if you had like the bed joined to your wardrobe, your entire living room, inbuilt furniture, it's gonna be difficult for you to change. Having inbuilt furniture is good, but you have to know what to do it for. I think I elaborated a lot on this in my renovation regrets video. So check that out. I'm not gonna reiterate those points. And that is it for this video. If you made it this far, thank you so much. You must really like me or something. Um, I hope this video gave you a good idea about a lot of the trends happening in renovation in Singapore that I've seen. And I wish you all the best for renovating your own house. Or if you're just watching this video, just get in the know. Just know what's happening in the renovation scene because that's what I do. Yeah, so thank you guys so much for watching. And I'll see you guys in another video. Bye!